Back to Share Jesus Apply Scripture. If you missed the last segment, we are talking about evangelism, the importance of evangelism, and some of the challenges that have come up in recent um, statistics that we're going to address now. I'm Jordan Shambly, joined by Wesley Wyman, Cedra Sarton. Wesley, you had something you wanted to reiterate yeah, on this, yeah. the top of this segment. For those that may have mm-hmm. just now be tuning in or may have missed the first segment, one of the two, um, I just want to re- reemphasize that there are some positives, and yeah. that's that we all... Um, at least 96% of the millennials believe that we should be sharing our faith. However, hmm. the huge drop-off and the reason we're having this program today is that 47% of millennials believe that you should not share your faith with someone of another faith. Yeah. Which, as we mentioned and you highlighted, that's preaching to the choir, and mm-hmm. then you're, it defeats the purpose right. logically yeah. of yeah. evangelism. And then last but not least, <laughs> another very, disencourage, uh, very discouraging <clears throat> Point of the millennials in this study by the Barner Group mm. is that if someone disagrees with you, then that means that you're the one judging them. Right. And so those two are two things that we're going to talk about yeah. this segment that are false and that we mm. want to provide some truth to and to show you that, that there are ways uh, and that it's biblical to be compassionate and loving. And if we mm. really, as you mentioned, and you drill down on this a little bit, and I'm, you know, if you hop in here if you want yeah, to sure. dig a little more, but you emphasize the importance of. That if we really believe in both heaven and hell, and mm-hmm. we really are motivated mm-hmm. by what God's done for us through His Son Jesus, His sacrificial love, unconditional love right. for us, and that's saturated in our lives, mm-hmm. this is not something that one is negotiable just based on sheer uh, experience, but also by the text and the scripture. Yeah. We also have a command too, yeah. and so this is just a non-negotiable. And if we really believe those things, that that's happened in our lives. And we can't help but to, one, live it out, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just live it out. And two, like you said, when given the opportunity, if you don't have the spiritual gift of evangelism, right. God gives you softballs all the time. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I was asked on the way back, mm-hmm. uh, I was reading my Bible in, uh, in an airport in, in India on my way back. What I do mm-hmm. when I have some time. Now, I'm not I'm not trying to act oversaved. I also <laughs> look at ESPN and I watch, I follow sports too. But I also read my Bible. It's part of what I do. Right, yeah. And I was reading through Daniel, and mm-hmm. I, there was a couple of things I was wanting to take away from there. I was trying to learn the book of Daniel. Well, lady sits down out of nowhere and says, why are you reading your Bible? Mm-hmm. Well, that's the softball. Yeah, Let me yeah. tell you why I'm reading my Bible. So yeah. it happens. God does mm-hmm. set those things up, and it's important that we uh, don't miss out on it. So God gives us softballs. Right. It's going to happen. When we do that, we can't be the 47% that said, well... It, yeah. it whisper to yourself, mm-hmm. ah, this is a good opportunity to switch subjects. No, yeah. talk about it. Yeah. So, so it is important mm-hmm. and to drill down and say, look, it, it, this should be, mm-hmm. it's non-negotiable. What happened? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned that. Yeah, and, and um, I mean, one of the things about evangelism, evangelism is that you're doing it whether you know it or not. Mm-hmm. So if you really believe something, say, if I really believe in Lifestyle gravity. for a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, if I really believe in gravity, I'm going to live as if gravity is a real thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. If I really believe that uh, Jesus Christ is my king, Good point. I'm going to, maybe not perfectly, but at least consistently, mm. live as if he's my king. We'll have a repentant lifestyle, yeah. that's yeah. for sure. So the, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So the way you live your life really says a lot about what you believe. I mean, it, it's point. an inevitable thing. So even these people who say, no, evangelism is wrong, you shouldn't offend people by saying something that's different from what they believe. You're doing it whether you know it or not. Right. The only thing is, you're, you're, get, you're, you're preaching a false gospel. You're saying, by me saying that I'm a Christian and being silent about the truth of the gospel, I'm saying that the gospel doesn't matter, that right. Jesus doesn't matter. Yes, he's my king, but I don't take him seriously, mm-hmm. and neither should you. Yeah. That's what you're saying about him. So you're evangelizing with a false gospel. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and that's yeah. that's pretty. That's something to take seriously. Yeah. Well, I mean, working radio for seven over mm-hmm. seven years, um, and it's talk radio. So yeah. I, you know, I hear all the news stories, and part of my job, um, in the morning for my host was to go through different news stories, find pick out ones that I think. So I, I was reading all, you know, keeping up with the news mm-hmm. pretty good, and constantly hearing stories of. This group that was offended, that's offended by this group, and it, and, and it is about. Yeah. It, so we've all got ourselves wrapped up in not offending someone. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you could not, mm-hmm. not, yeah, yeah. not offending someone, and so and and a lot of you know a lot of times today, um, especially in you know 
I, I guess in the world we're taught that our our beliefs are offensive mm -hmm. to somebody. Let me ask you a question then, <laughs> yeah. Sager. Is it possible that what you're saying is offensive far more than what you're the way you're acting? Because mm. you know, so many times yeah. to make the point here that you're trying to make is that so many times we think because of what we said that's offended the other person that we need to change our behavior and the things that we're doing and how we're mm -hmm. saying things and things like that. And really it's the message mm -hmm. It's the offensive part. Yeah. Well, you know, we just got through uh, doing a discussion on five topics that are not often talked in church, mm -hmm. spoken about in church mm -hmm. or by Christians in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes <laughs> those topics are not discussed because they might offend uh. someone. So this is actually a cycle going on in our churches. Sure. The pastors remain, not all pastors, um, um, like I said, we the, the idea for the series came from a sermon preached at your church yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> so there are churches that mm. do cover it yeah, yeah. um but a lot you know just because you don't want to you don't want to offend people you, you don't want to stir the pot you don't right. want to start anything so it's it's become a pattern to keep keep our mouth shuts on certain yeah. things mm. so anything that offends somebody you just kind of keep your mouth shut so when it comes up with someone who might be offended by you just mentioning your faith, what are you going to do when that's right. all you've been taught yeah. in mm -hmm. church? Just keep your mouth closed, and that's what you do. I, I will say, I, I do understand not wanting to offend people, and I feel <laughs> sure. like the Bible teaches, if at, if, if at all possible, as, long, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with all men. I can't right. give you the reference. Romans. Your, Romans, there yeah. you go. Um, and I, I take that seriously. Um, really do measure your words. If, you're go, if you are going to say something that oh, offends sure. someone, what are you talking about, first of all? Is it something that's worth offending someone over? Is it the gospel? Yeah. The only thing worth offending someone over, in, in most cases, in a real sense of the word offending, is Jesus Christ, because he already said, the world hated you, hated me, they'll hate you. He's already an offense to the world because he's, he's claiming kingship over it, and they don't want that. The world yeah. does not want that. Right. Um, approach people in truth and love. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If, you, if you're... If you can't look at someone and go, I love you as another person, another soul, mm -hmm. um, and I mm. want you but to, I want you to be saved. That's how you should approach every situation and talking yeah. to someone. It's real easy when you when you do it that way. There, you don't go at someone because I'm mad at you for not believing what yeah, I yeah. believe. You oh, go yeah. at it's your motives and your addiction <clears throat> because yeah, who's to say mm -hmm. that offending someone mm -hmm. is a bad thing anyways? Because if right. I were to offend my son when I told him that he couldn't. Yeah. Do certain things. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you yeah. know, what I mean? and vice versa. Uh -huh. If I was a friend, offend mm -hmm. one of my friends, if it meant sharing with them mm -hmm. something that I know to be true, yeah, and that would be beneficial and helpful for them, mm -hmm. uh, namely mm -hmm. salvation, mm -hmm. you know, and also in addition to that, all the biblical ideas and principles that, that are taught. Yeah. So if I know these things, the Ten Commandment, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, and mm -hmm. and in the motive and 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 the unconditional love of Christ, if I'm sharing these things, and these things are what's offensive. Mm -hmm. So the question. To me, we need to be careful when asked the question, if someone disagrees with you, that means that you're judging them. Mm -hmm. That's not the question. Yeah, yeah. I think what we need to ask mm -hmm. ourselves is, that are we are we saying, uh, uh, are we sharing biblical worldview, biblical mm -hmm. ideas, and are we sharing the gospel? Because if that is the case, mm -hmm. and, you're, and, you're, and your motivations lined up with God's heart, and that didn't, and we're going to make mistakes in this area too. Mm -hmm. So repent from those, you know, make some corrections. I know that I have. I had to go right. back and say, look, uh, I handled that uh, to a non-Christian, mm -hmm. handled that wrongly. Mm -hmm. You know, so that happens, and like we said, live a repentant lifestyle. Mm -hmm. However, the goal is to to share that, and if we believe these things, we've got to share these mm -hmm. things, and we let the chips fall where they lay. Yeah. Because ultimately, they, it's not the issue they have with me. Because mm -hmm. I could deliver it in the most eloquent, most oh, yeah. compassionate mm -hmm. way. But there's a reason why the New uh, Old Testament and Proverbs, it says that love um, mm -hmm. uh, basically uh, turns away wrath. Mm -hmm. uh, a kind word or <coughs> turns away wrath. Yeah. Because people get mad mm -hmm. about things mm -hmm. you yeah. know that you, you don't have to do yeah they're yeah. just mad yeah exactly <laughs> so it's not yeah. necessarily you and mm -hmm. so if we believe these things we have to share these things yeah uh, a perfect example of this in, in a sort of real, real real world context um was the the missionary hudson taylor when he went to china um it was back in maybe the 1800s um he it, it was during a time where where the british um the the what was going on was there were a lot of British influences in China that were very offensive to the Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, so trade, the trade, uh, 
spice trades, those kind of things were going on, taking advantage of the Chinese people. Mm -hmm. British things, Brit anything that looked British was offensive to Chinese mm -hmm. people, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. They were being mistreated. So when this British man, Hudson Taylor, goes to China, the one of the first things he does is he doesn't dress like a British person anymore. He dresses mm -hmm. like a Chinese person. Mm -hmm. But he, what, what's really <clears throat> interesting is the thing that he's carrying into China, the gospel, is the most offensive thing in the world to a lost yeah, person. Yeah. So he's not trying not to offend them. He's, tr he's measuring how is he offending them. Is he offending them with himself, with things that don't matter, mm -hmm. that will get in the way of the gospel, or is he offending them with the gospel? Yeah, yeah. We need to measure ourselves in that context. It's not a bad thing to not want to offend people. It's a good thing to want to live at peace with people. But you need to know what your priorities are. Your priority is to live for your king. Which is why Paul said, I became all things to exactly. all men that I yes. might win some. Yeah. It's for the same reason. And I'd be surprised if he didn't went inspired <laughs> or motivated by that passage oh, scripture. Because oh, it has yeah. been for me. Mm -hmm. um, that's the same way. That's a great point. And you need to be very conscientious of things like that if it means you sharing the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, if it means, uh, you know, like when I worked in apartment ministries, you know, I didn't talk about how I have a dad all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. none of them did. Mm -hmm. You know, I just tried to be a dad figure for them. And then when they asked me questions about my dad, I would, uh, you know, yeah. I would, you know, or when, when yeah. given the opportunity, yeah. mm -hmm. but you got to be very conscientious <clears throat> of the other person's perspective and worldview. Yeah. You don't want to make them feel like they're less of, less of mm -hmm. a person or less mm -hmm. of, or, or they are that God loves them less. Yeah. You know. And you got to have uh, kind of your priorities straight again. Like if I'm going to go to, uh, go to evangelize if I'm an evangelist and I'm going to go to a group and talk about the gospel to this group that hates guns yeah, and yeah. that wants to repeal right, the right, second yeah, amendment yeah. I'm not going to go in there with my gun right, and right, say right. That hey kinda... guys <laughs> Christians love guns yeah. you should love guns too That's that yeah. I, That yeah. would be counterproductive right, right. and really I would feel like that would be the, the non-negotiable here is what yeah. we're agreeing on the non-negotiable mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. gospel and exactly. sharing your faith yeah. mm -hmm. And and the biblical worldview and the biblical mm -hmm. ideas that come with scripture are non negotiable. And, and mm -hmm. would you agree with that, Sager? I would. I would definitely <laughs> Good. Sharing your faith. agree. If you didn't, we'd have a problem. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know I don't know if we'll do that. We'll try to do this in a minute. Sure. Um, yeah. But but just to be transparent here, I've only been about five or six times in my life mm. on an intentional evangelistical effort right. where we traveled and we went to a specific location mm -hmm. for the intention of sharing your faith. However, mm -hmm. I do uh, I've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. And there's there's obviously b biblical evidence for that. Me personally, though, I make sure it's uh, I'm I'm ready for the softballs. Mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm ready. Yeah. I make sure that I'm evangelizing my family mm -hmm. first. And so, yeah. have you had the opportunity to to share your faith? I know you. have. I mean, it, it's every day. And sometimes, if you pray for it, if you pray, God, just yes, send those people it happens. to me. He'll yeah. you, sometimes you'll be like, where are the people at? But you've had people come up and oh, talk to you all day. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's just. I mean, going to the gas station, mm -hmm. you, you know, in the way that you treat the lady at the mm -hmm. gas station. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, she and, may ask you, yeah. why are you treating her like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, just, I mean, it, just somebody you sit next to on the bus yeah. or on your plane right there, you know, yeah, like yeah. on your plane ride to one of your trips, there's sure. someone sitting next to you mm -hmm. and ask, or, or, or wherever you are and ask you, hey, why mm. are you reading your Bible? God <laughs> yeah. will send them to you if you ask. Yeah, yeah and, and I think that's, that's key. That's what you need to take away from this is that. Um, evangelism is, is not um, something that means you need to pack up your bags, go to another country, and be a professional evangelist, but it also is not a something that's optional to you. Um, if you truly believe that Christ is your king, your king has a command, and that's to go out and make disciples. Wherever you are, wherever you plant your feet in this world, by God's sovereignty, he put you there. That's your mission field, and that's your mission is to make disciples and to preach the gospel. We hope you do that by sharing truth and applying scripture. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.